What's up, y'all? We back at it. We here for a good time, not a long time. You are watching Pain to Purpose with the Victorious when I am Tierra Onis, all right? So we just gonna hop right into it because I don't wanna waste no time. I'm gonna get this message delivered because it's a pretty lengthy one, okay? But um, hear the word of the Lord, okay? Isaiah 54, one. Sing, O childless woman, you who have never given birth. Break into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord. Rejoice, barren one, you who have never given birth. That's for you men, too. Come on now. This ain't just about women. It's for men and women. It's for those with children and those without children. You got to peak game and put your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes on and tap in in this hour. Glory to God. The Lord says, burst into song, burst into a song of joy and shout. You who have never been in labor. Okay. All right. For the deserted wife will have more children than the married one. The woman who is alone will have many children. More than the woman whose husband never left her. Wow. Wow. What are you saying? Hold on real quick. I'm going to put you on game. Fill the air with song. You who have never experienced childbirth. You're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women because God said so. Spiritual children are on the way. God children are on the way. New beginnings are on the way. New blessings are on the way. Glory to God. I was picking up in the spirit about um, union and unity and being united, okay? God said, I am adding on to you, okay? And I was also picking up in the spirit of like babies and things like that, all right? Okay, but back to the scripture. Um, remember, it said, Sing, oh childless woman. Okay, see, barrenness back then, barrenness was often seen as a curse or a disgrace. Okay, but God said to rejoice, right? He said, Rejoice. He called the barren woman to rejoice. He said, Go on, do this right here. Okay, rejoice. Okay, because what seems impossible for man is possible with God, right? Right. OK. The beginning of the verse is symbolic of God's ability to bring forth life and fruitfulness out of hopeless or dead situations. My God, God said there is hope. There is hope. OK, there is hope. All right. There is hope. You are being called to shed your shame and step into your honor. OK, God is removing disgrace and replacing it with dignity. The season has changed. The hour has changed. The time has changed. Glory to God. Um, essentially, things are changing around you. You're going up. You're going up. Your position is changing. God said, sing, childless woman. Rejoice, barren woman. I said, shout and rejoice because your joy is not tied to your circumstances but to the future promises of god i know what it's looking like in your life right now but this ain't that that's what the lord is saying this ain't that okay the barren woman is interpreted as representing Israel who was in a state of spiritual desolation during exile okay yet god promised restoration and a future where her um, descendants, both physical and spiritual, will be more numerous than those of a woman who has borne many children. It reflects God's power to restore and multiply, uh, multiply blessings even when it seems impossible. Okay? God said, watch me do the impossible in your life. Watch me do the impossible. Watch me multiply the blessings. God said, I have the ability to produce fruit in a dead situation. I have the ability to produce fruit in a dead situation. Those of you who were in seasons of barrenness or feeling unproductive or insignificant, God said, you will be fruitful. He said, be fruitful. Okay. The season has changed for you. This is your season. Great fruitfulness is upon you. Great fruitfulness is upon you and your spiritual offsprings. 
okay? And when I speak of spiritual offsprings, okay? All right? The desolate woman can um, represent the Gentiles, okay? Who were not a part of God's chosen people. Outsiders. Who were not a part of God's chosen people through Christ. They will be grafted in. With that being said... Because they um have been grafted in through Christ, it's going to cause spiritual children to increase. Okay? God is showing his expansiveness. Okay? Put it in the comments. Say divine increase. Divine increase. What is a Gentile? It's a person that is not Jewish. It's a person that's not belonging to one's own religious community. Non-members of your church, okay? Divine increase, glory to God, okay? Spiritual abundance is your portion, okay? Despite your apparent desolation or barrenness, you're going to experience spiritual abundance and growth, okay? Remember, I spoke on the children. I said, you're going to have far more children, okay? Break into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord. It's a metaphor for spiritual descendants. Or the fruit of one's faith and ministry. Glory to God. So when you put it in that context, the barren woman's future fruitfulness indicates a significant spiritual multiplication okay it's going to surpass natural expectations of those that are already blessed what god is about to do for you is going to surpass the natural expectations of those already blessed those who have already received the blessings that they've been waiting for those who already got what you've been waiting on what you got coming to you is gonna it's gonna it's gonna listen It's going to surpass the natural expectations. Okay. All right. Spiritual multiplication is upon you. Fruitfulness is upon you. You will surpass the natural expectation. My God. My God. I need y'all to tap in. Okay. Tap in. Because your spiritual blessings. Okay. And impacts are not limited by physical or societal conditions. It's not limited by physical or societal conditions. The world don't got no say so on how this go down. It's not going to make sense to them. God's transformative power. The power of God has the ability to bring forth life and blessings from a situation that seemed devoid of hope. You thought it wasn't no hope for that. Put it in the comments. Say only God can do it. Only God can do it. He can turn any situation around. Okay. He can turn any situation around. Okay. All right. That scripture is an example of divine intervention. Okay. Divine intervention and grace. Because he called it. He called it. He said rejoice. Barren woman. The circumstances. Did not define the blessing. God already ordained it. He called you to, he said, rejoice. Did you not hear what I said? See, God's plans are not limited by human circumstances. And his um, power will lead to extraordinary outcomes beyond human expectations. They ain't going to be able to believe this. They are not going to believe this. What God is about to do in your life, them people going to be like, I can't believe that. Oh, my God. They literally going to be like, mm. they don't, they, they never expected this. They never seen it coming. God said, I got a secret weapon for you, baby. And it's going to knock some people. I'm talking about it's going to Tyson blows. It's knocking people out the park, baby. I got a secret weapon that I got just for you, says the Lord. Lord, yes, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. God said your future is filled with spiritual abundance, growth, and restoration. Okay? 
and it's restoration that exceeds everything that was previously thought possible. They never seen it coming. Increase and multiplication is coming to your house. Increase and multiplication is coming to your house. You will be a witness to God's capacity to bring about miraculous and abundant outcomes even during times which the situation seems hopeless or dead. Glory to God. Divine increase and multiplication. The Lord says increase is coming, okay? Enlarge your house. Build an addition. Spread out your home. Spare no expense. Some of y'all, y'all need more space to receive these blessings. You need more rooms. You need a bigger car. You need a bigger workspace. You need to expand in order to receive, okay? Enlarge your tent. Add extensions to your dwelling. Some of y'all, y'all need more rooms in your house to live in, okay? Okay? God said, yes, do it. Make He said, make the tents, the tent ropes longer. Okay. <laughs> Expand your house, says the Lord. Don't think too small. Okay. Don't think small. Don't hold back, says the Lord. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Okay. Some of y'all, y'all going to be buying a house, renting a house or some upgrading to a house. Y'all going to do something. Y'all going to do something. Okay. And I also was seeing in the spirit like houses, um, when I was writing this, I was seeing like houses being built up from the ground. I'm talking about they was big and they was brand new. Like it was like, wow, I never like I'm talking about they, these these houses were so big, but they was brand new and built up from the ground. But um, on another note, spiritually, you know, this is our house, right? Our temple, right? So I just want to drop that gem in there in case somebody needed to, you know, guidance or clarity or something or direction. God said, you're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family, okay? You're about to take over whole nations and resettle abandoned cities. Places that's empty, you're about to take it over and fill it up. Like, do not be afraid. God said, you're not going to be embarrassed. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't be afraid to take that step, okay? God said, move in faith. He said, I gave you a command to enlarge the place of your tent. Prepare for increase even before the blessing is visible. Prepare for increase even before the blessing is visible, okay? So some of y'all, y'all got marriages coming, new babies coming, businesses finna open. I'm seeing new unions in the spirit, okay? Um, You need to act even before the blessing is visible, okay? Because it's putting your mindset on display to God, okay? You ain't no big stepper, okay? If you can't walk by faith, okay? If you can't move in faith. If you don't know, I don't know what the outcome of this is, but I'm going to go anyway. If you not no big stepper, okay? And if you lack faith, get off my channel because you, you definitely ain't no big stepper, okay? This is for people with faith, okay? Okay? God said, I'm about to pour out a blessing on you that's so big, so mighty that you will need more space to contain it. You're going to need more space to contain it, okay? God said, you are about to be so fruitful that you will need more space. You're about to have children. Some of y'all, y'all been praying for children. Y'all been praying for like a wife or like a, a fiance or um, like babies or something like that. Something is coming. Children is coming. That's my baby. That's your baby. Your baby is coming, okay? God said, be fruitful and multiply, all right? Be fruitful and multiply, okay? All right. God has ordered you to make room for the blessings and, and the opportunities that God is about to bring. OK, so some of y'all y'all need to start cleaning up y'all lives, getting things in order. Prepare yourself for the things that are about to um, come your way. OK. All right. So also moving in faith um, to enlarge your tent. OK, it symbolizes your expectation of growth. OK, so what does that mean? Okay, faith requires action before manifestation. You got to do something before you can see something. How you going to hope it work out? How you going to hope you want? How you want that and you're not preparing for it? You know what I'm saying? You got to do something to get something. Faith requires action before manifestation. Okay, put it in the comments. Put big stepper in the comments. If you got that real divine faith, put big stepper in the comments. Because when I say big stepper, that's the kind of the faith that when, when God said, get out that boat and come on over here and walk on water. Get out the boat and come on. Come on. Come on down here. Come, come on down here. He got out that boat. 
he got scared along the way, but he got out that boat. You got to be having that big that big step of faith where you, you don't mind getting up out that boat and obeying God, okay? For somebody here, God said, I'm going to expand your sphere of influence, okay? Stretch the curtains wide and lengthen the cords. I'm about to bring increase. You have to be ready to expand and accommodate it. God said, what I'm doing in your life, you're going to have to be ready to expand and accommodate it. My God, you need more space to welcome the blessing because I'm giving it to you. God said, I'm giving it to you. It's yours already, but you're going to need some more space. Okay. All right. Um, will you embrace the vision that God is giving? Because see, you thinking one thing, but God said, think bigger. The blessing I got for you is big. It's bigger. Go bigger. Whatever you do in life right now, upsize it. Go big. Okay. He said, don't hold back. Okay. That was divine instruction just then. Don't hold back. Don't limit God. Don't shrink um, in the face of opportunities neither. Don't put a limit on God because God don't got no limit. All right. He don't got no limit. Remove the constraints on faith, imagination, and action to prepare boldly for what is coming. Okay. To prepare boldly for what is coming. To prepare for the future. Come on now. Some of you have one thing in mind. God is saying more. Mm -mm. The blessing is bigger. The plan is bigger. Bigger is um is bigger than what people expect. Nobody saw this coming. What God is about to give you or, or hand over to you is bigger than what people already expected. Okay. They never thought it was going to be this big. Okay. All right. Essentially, um, for some of you, God is calling some of you to stretch beyond your comfort zones. I know what you used to, but the, the, the thing that God got for you is so good. You're going to have to step out your comfort zone to get it. It's not going to be what you used to. It's not going to look like what you used to. It's not going to talk like what you used to. It's not going to act like what you used to. It's not going to think like what you're used to. It's not going to treat you like what you used to. It's not going to use you like what you used to. Let me tell you something. What God got for you, he said, think bigger, go bigger. Go bigger, go home. For sure. Okay. All right. Um, some of you, you need to stretch beyond your comfort zones. Okay. But you have to trust when God is saying, enlarge your tent, make space, get ready to, you need to make space to be able to accommodate these blessings that I'm about to give you. You have to move in faith. Okay. And you have to trust that God's provision is going to fill that expanded uh, space. Trust that God's provision is going to fill the expanded space. Okay. God said, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Y'all know what stakes is. You know, the things you put down in the ground. You know what I'm saying? Deepen your roots. Okay. Reinforce the foundation while you are expanding. See, you got to put things in motion, put things in place in order to be able to expand. But in the meantime, you need to deepen your roots while this expansion is taking place. Okay. It must be grounded in solid faith and strong spiritual practices, okay? So for some of you, that looks like prayer, study, community, or friendship, fellowship, however that go, okay? If you don't do that, the foundation, it could possibly become unstable. If you don't start out on that level, it could become unstable and it's not going to stand or it's not going to last, okay? So um, for some of you... Um, when... Okay... The Lord is saying, deepen your roots and reinforce the foundation while expanding, okay? So that means developing relationships with God at the foundation, okay? That's what's going to make it stable. Whatever is coming, you have to put God first. Make God the foundation. That is how it's going to last. Whatever you're trying to build, whatever you're trying to begin, whatever you're trying to start, make God the foundation, okay? And then, um, like, again, while I was writing this, I picked up on this scripture in the spirit, okay? For somebody here, you need to go and read Psalms 127, okay? Psalms 127, 1. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good, okay? 
So when you get ready to enter this new thing, build it on the foundation of prayer um, and study, um, friendship, community, okay? Um, also, you want to build the friendship with God at the center of it, okay? For some of y'all, y'all need to develop a relationship with God and build your own one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, okay? Because understand this, while God's plan is to um, increase you, right? It's going to require a strong foundation to support it, okay? So, um, unions, marriages, unity, like friendships, those type of things, they're going to require a godly foundation, okay? All right? But um, when God says enlarge your tent, all right? Enlargement of your tent also represents God's plan to bring in more people. God said, I'm about to bring in more people. More people are coming. More people are coming. Put that in the comments. Say more people are coming. Okay. All right. Both Israel and Gentiles into his covenant community. That's what's coming. Okay. Both Israel and Gentiles into his covenant community. Okay. So what is this? It foreshadows the inclusion of the Gentiles in the new covenant through Christ. This the new wave. This the new motion, okay? Um, where the spiritual family of God will expand greatly. It's going to expand greatly. For some of you, family is coming. Spiritual family, okay? So enlarge your tent, okay? Step out on faith, okay? And trust that God's word will come to pass. Some of y'all about to make some new friends or something like that. Or you can do something, okay? Um, position yourself for the blessing, okay? For the future, all right. Position yourself for the future. OK, get ready for the abundant blessing and increase that God is preparing you for. All right. All right. God said, I'm about to get the glory out of you. I'm going to get the glory out of you. I'm going to get the glory out of you for myself, says the Lord. OK, God is extending all the borders of the land because where you are is too small. You need to um, expand to receive. And for some of you. Y'all need to expand up here in order to receive because for some of y'all, it's too your brain little or something or your mindset got you hindered or something. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. You're going to spread out to the right and to the left. You're going to spread out to the right and to the left, okay? All right? So you're going to spread abroad, okay? Abroad. Some of you, you will spread abroad. Some of you, you're going to end up overseas, okay? Some of you, you're going to travel from where you are and you're going to travel a long distance. I'm picking up on long distance, okay? Long distance, all right? Isaiah 54, 3. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities, okay? Thy seed shall possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited, filled with people. Okay. <coughs> for some of you, you're alone right now, but God said, I got something for you. Your home may even be incomplete, but God said, I'm going to fill your home. Okay. And then I was picking up on seed. Okay. Seed, seed for some of you. Um, it's going to happen for you. God is saying it's going to happen for you. Some of you have been wanting a child or you've been wanting something. You've been wanting a baby or, or, or something, something. God said yes. Okay. He said, yes, your children will conquer nations and will resettle desolate cities. Praise God for the future. Praise God for the future. Okay. Praise God for the future because your children will conquer nations and will resettle desolate cities. Okay. So it's not going to be empty around here much longer. It's, you're not going to be lonely much longer. Glory to God. For you will break forth right and left. You're going to break forth right and left. Okay. So they can't stop this. Nobody can stop this. Okay. Because God has called you to be blessed. He called you to multiply. Okay. He called you to have more. Other people, they probably didn't want you to have more. They probably tried to put a limit on what you, you know, whatever, whatever. But God said, okay, that's fine. They could put a limit on it. But God said, I called you to have more. So you will have more. Ain't nothing they can do about this. They can't stop this. Okay. Exodus 1 12. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. My God. 
the more these people try to bring you down the more they try to hurt you the more they try to keep their foot on your neck the more they try to slander you the more they try to do whatever they want to do to you the more pain they put on your plate the more they were oppressed the more they multiplied and spread the more they oppress you the more you will multiply and increase so welcome the pain because the pain has purpose glory to god glory to god though you have been mistreated you will grow larger and take over put it in the comments say i'm taking over i am taking over and these people they won't be able to stand you any longer they're not going to be able to stand you any longer you will flourish and some people they're going to be in distress because of your blessings my god hey what i'm picking up on the spirit is some people are going to be so angry about your blessings like they may even grow to hate you like it's going to be that bad they're going to be in distress. I'm talking about, I don't know what, hey, distress. Distress is what these people are going to be in distress about your blessings, honey. The Lord says, break forth, break forth, break forth. Overflow like that of the bursting out of water. Overflow like that of the bursting out of water. Break forth break forth come on now spread out to the right and to the left okay god said spread out to the right and to the left understand that when he told you to spread out to the right and to the left that it was not just a representation of growth but a representation of unhindered expansion glory to god because god told you to do it he called you to it he said expand so it's nothing nobody else can do about it them babies is coming their wife is coming that business is coming that house is coming them cars is coming that whatever you need honey is coming nobody can stop this because god called you to expand glory to god and i was picking up on capacity in the spirit when i was writing this and for some reason i was led to figure out how many people the state farm arena can hold and i was looking it up and it said it could hold like thirteen thousand people but i'm sure it probably hold a little bit more than that like because you got workers and all types of stuff and so the capacity might be like 14,000 or 15,000 for the building or something like that. Maybe more. Who knows? But capacity was on my radar. Capacity. Capacity. Okay. How much can you contain? Do you have the capacity to hold what God is trying to give you? Okay. Get ready to experience multiplication and influence numbers and impact. Some of you, you, you're about to increase in influence, numbers, and impact. Like, you finna hit hard, in other words. You're gonna hit hard, in other words, okay? I want you to understand that this spreading out is a is a direct um, representation of divine favor. The fact that God is saying spread out is a uh, it's a direct a direct representation of divine favor, okay? God said spread out. He is allowing limitless growth, limitless growth, uh, limitless growth, both spiritually and territorially. Um, you're being increased spiritually. So glory to God for that occurring in your life. OK, um, your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. So what am I speaking of when I say that? OK, restoration and transformation is here for you. OK. What was once abandoned, broken, or destroyed will be reclaimed physically and spiritually, okay? God is giving you the ability to rebuild and bring life where there was once ruin. Where there was once ruin, life will be there, my God. Things that were broken will have the ability, to, uh, will have the chance to be rebuilt. Glory to God, okay? You will be given authority and influence over territories that once belonged to someone else. My God. God said, I'm giving it to you. It's yours. He's granting you dominion over new realms. Okay. In the spirit, I saw you taking over different areas of authority, like business, culture, education, like um, areas where other powers or ideologies have been um, thriving. You're going to settle in that land and take over. Like you're going to take it over. You're going to take it by storm. Like it's crazy. Your descendants will occupy other nations. 
You will not be confined to a single nation, but you will spread across the earth, claiming nations as a part of your inheritance, descendants, legacy. You like thinking one way. You're thinking like just one set of people. But God said, I'm calling you to more than one set of people. I'm seeing like it, it says your descendants will not will, your descendants will occupy other nations. You will not be confined to a single nation. Wow. I hope they uh, just the fact that I repeated it. I hope you could hear that with your spiritual ears because that was that was big. That was gigantic. What I just said. OK, your blessing will have a generational impact. It's going to have a generational impact, okay? Not only for the present, but for the future. Glory to God, okay? Desolate cities will be inhabited. Empty places will be filled with people. God's ability to turn situations of loss and barrenness into thriving centers of activity and blessing will be displayed. So you might be all alone right now. You may be incomplete right now. You may need whatever you've been asking God for. He said it's coming. OK, he said a promise of repopulation is upon you. A promise of repopulation is upon you. Somebody, you need that promise right there. You need that. You need that seed I just dropped on you. A promise of repopulation is upon you. OK, God said there is hope, renewal and divine transformation in places that seemed beyond repair. You thought it was beyond repair. God said, no, it ain't. I got you. He said, fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Do not be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood. Okay. And that's for men and women. Don't just hear widow and, and think, oh, it can never be me. I'm a man. That's not me. It could be anybody. Okay. Put it in the comments. Divine reversal. Okay. God said, you're not going to remember it anymore. Divine reversal. Divine reversal. Okay. Um, the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood. Okay. These are both examples of like deep emotional pain, social pain. Okay. Um, God said it is finished. Divine reversals are here for you. Okay. Divine reversals are upon you. Okay. All right. God is, um, he's healing wounds of the past. Okay. But he will also restore honor and dignity to you through his grace all right so past failures past mistakes past losses none of that it don't matter no more it does not devi define you anymore your identity or your future is not defined your, your your future none of that is defined by the past your past is set apart god said i set your, your I'm, I'm sorry yes your past is set apart your future is set apart though okay all right. So what God has for you, he is saying societal stigmas cannot attach itself to you. Societal stigmas cannot attach itself to you. So people are always like, oh, like any, you know what the stigmas in our society, you know, but God said, I covered you in such a way that none of that can touch you. I know what society says. I know what they say is the usual. I know what they say is the norm. I know what they how they say it should go. I know what they say is un unacceptable. I know what they deem to be unworthy. I know what they deem to be weird, crazy, or outlandish. But God said none of that is going to work for you. It's not. None of that can attach itself to you, okay? You will not have to fear disgrace or live under the weight of humiliation because God is offering deep reassurance, okay? That your circumstances will change. Your circumstances will change. Just like the barren woman who called, who got called to rejoice. Glory to God, okay? Put it in the comments Say my circumstances are changing, okay? You will be vindicated in such a way that you will be free from fear of judgment or public scorn. God said, I'm going to vindicate you in such a way that you're going to be uh, free from the fear of judgment or public scorn. Nothing they say, their words will fall to the ground. It's nothing they can say, no judgment they can pass. It's going to fall to the ground. It's nothing they can do. He said, you're going to forget the shame of your youth. The things that happen to you, they have no power. Though you may not, not actually forget. In a literal sense, God is saying that the pain of the past will no longer have power over your future. It won't have power over your future. Freedom. Freedom. Put it in the comments. Say freedom. Freedom is here. Glory to God. Um, the type of healing God is bringing, right? It's going to erase 
the emotional scars. The type of healing that God is bringing is going to erase emotional scars. The grip that your traumatic experiences have had over you, it cannot hold you any longer because God said you will live in joy and peace. It got to go. The season is um changing, honey. Time is up for all of that. Some of you who have been abandoned much like a widow without a protector or a provider. God said, don't worry, your maker is your husband. Some of y'all men on here, y'all shy away from the word of God. Y'all shy away from God because he's always referring to you as the bride or the husband. You need to understand that that is such a blessed term. If only you had the wisdom and the insight to understand who you are as the bride of Christ. Come on now, y'all better cut it out with those gender things because, that's that, listen, God is good. God is so good. God is so good. <clears throat> God is so good, okay? God said, don't worry, your husband is your maker. He said, I'm, I am I made you. I am your maker. I'm your husband. That's a gem if y'all ain't hearing me for some of y'all. Um, In a figurative um sense, okay? God is like, Paint you a picture of like his intimate covenant with you, okay? His love and his commitment towards you. God said, I always had you. I always had your back. I never left you. I never forsake you. I always got you. I got you then. I got you now. I got you forever. I always had you, okay? All right? His faithfulness and protection will be seen, okay? So trust God, okay? His faithfulness and his protection is going to be seen in your life, okay? God said, trust me, okay? And this is a call to shift your focus because some of y'all, y'all suffer from shame, fear, disgrace, humiliation, and it's all based on human judgment or your past failures. God said that don't stand no more. When God said to trust him, it opened the door for you to be able to rest in him in his redemptive power. Okay. And know that his plan will bring about the honor, the healing and the vindication that you need. Come on now. God said your future is in his hands. Your future is in God's hands. And his restoration will overshadow any past misfortunes or losses. He said, what I'm finna do in your life, all them L's that you had to take, all them losses you had to take, all the times that the relationships didn't work out, it broke up, all the, the failed uh, situations, the rejections and all of those things. He said, I'm going to restore you in such a way that none of that is going to matter anymore. None of them losses is going to matter when I give you this win. When I give you that big thing, when I give you that big thing right here, you ain't got to worry about none of that. Understand this. God said you have been released from the label or the identity of your past. You've been released. It's over. It's over. I need you to have faith and look at me and understand that it's over. Your past, it don't even matter no more. You don't got to worry about the past. Don't worry about this stuff. He said... You have been released from the label or identity of your past, okay? You have been released from the labels of past mistakes, sins, or missteps. He said, don't worry about this stuff. I got you. God said, I'm giving you a new identity. One free from the negative experiences and consequences of your past. Some of y'all did some things and y'all had to deal with some consequences. God said, what I'm finna bless you with, you ain't got to worry about none of that. Your blessings is not attached to none of that. That's just a part of your journey, a part of your story. You don't got to worry about this stuff no more, those people no more. You don't have to worry about those circumstances anymore. God said, I'm rewriting your story. I'm giving you a fresh start. Put it in the comments. I receive my fresh start. He said, you shall be unburdened. You shall be unburdened, okay? For your maker is your husband. Your husband. That's what he said. He said, for your maker, the one who created you, God. He said, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Put it in the comments, God. God, 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 God is your maker. God is your husband. Okay. See, when you're talking like that, okay, 
You got to have an intimate, personal relationship with your husband. God, God is looking at you with that same love and intimacy. Come on now. Um, he's like, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The, the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. It's a metaphor that, look, look Pete gang. He's displaying his deep commitment to you, okay? His love, his protective nature, much like a husband or a wife. Some of y'all is really out here looking for y'all wife or y'all husband. God said when, when he said, it's me, it's me, God, like you're going to find what your blessings that are coming, how you're going to be able to identify them is good. God is going to have them stamped. You're looking for your next opportunity and it's rooted in God. He said, look for me in the small print. Look for me in the details. I'm picking up in the spirit that some of you are going to have like a God loving, God fearing spouse. Like the person is going to be so protective and loving. They're going to be so committed to you. Come on now. Unity is coming. Okay. Not only is God a creator, but he's relational. Okay. He takes the role of a caring partner. So some of y'all been seeking God and you need somebody to take care of you. You need a caring partner to love on you, to be there for you. God said, I got you. It's going to, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send it to you. Come on now. He said, I got you. Okay. Um, and th that's a real gem for some of y'all that's out there waiting for union. You're going to receive a caring, loyal partner. God said, I am your creator and your redeemer. Okay. He formed you. He sustained you. And he will also restore and rescue you. God said, I got you. God said, I'm your redeemer. Okay. He said, though he is set apart, being holy and transcendent. What does transcendent mean? Meaning being uh, beyond or above the, the range of normal or physical human experience. It means surpassing the ordinary. Though I am set apart, I'm still deeply involved in your life. He said his promises are pure and trustworthy. They are backed by his divine character. His promises are backed by God. Put it in the comments. Say, everything is backed by God. God said, everything is backed by him. Don't worry. He's going to make sure that it comes to pass. For those of you who are feeling like abandoned or desolate, you know, God is letting you know your, uh, he wants me to tell you that ultimately your worth is anchored in him. You're feeling like all of these other things define you i don't know what it is that you feel like um defines you or like determines your value or something like that but god says your worth is anchored in him okay your worth is anchored in him okay divine protector divine provider put that in the comments okay because I'm about to speak on the husband, okay? Because God said, I'm your husband, okay? What is the husband? The husband, okay? The husband is responsible for the well-being, the safety, the sustenance of the household, okay? That's what he is responsible for, okay? All right? And I, that's another gem. For some of y'all looking for y'all spouse, if they're not concerned about your well-being, uh, keeping you safe, if they are not the head of household, if they're not a boss or a leader or something like that, that's not your spouse. I'm just telling you that now. Um, and some of you, you have a husband in a different form because the Lord says, I am your husband. You know what I'm saying? But just like he said, I am your husband, that's God. You know what I'm saying? You got spouses out here that's just like your husband that's out here in different forms. And I don't want to go digging and get the excavator for that just yet because that's a deeper topic. But i get the excavator and dig that out later. But um, some of y'all have husbands in different forms, okay? Um, I don't feel like, again, digging into all of that. But just to give you a gist, a little insight, just to dust it off a little bit for you. Some of um, the people that I'm speaking of that are similar to, like, this husband, um, there are people who are over you. There are people who are a provider for you. People who are a leader, one responsible for the well-being of the household, okay? Um, it's a person that, you know, is equal to you, like, in a sense. I don't know. How, I, 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 I have to explain it later, but because I'll be all day trying to 
talk about it because there's a lot that goes into that but um anyway god is saying i will be your protector and your provider assuring that all your needs are met every last one of your needs are about to be uh, met okay he's going to protect you from harm and he's going to provide for your future He's going to protect you from harm and he's going to provide for your future. Glory to God. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. A wife who married young only to be rejected, says your God. Okay. Some of y'all men is like, that ain't me. That's you too. It's men and women. There is no gender here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what began with hope but ended in heartbreak god said i'm gonna call you back from that i got you i got you okay god is promising you restoration okay he's painting you a picture of um divine love that does not give up even when the circumstances seem broken beyond repair a love that does not give up even when the circumstances seem broken uh beyond repair okay all right. Also, let's speak about the wife who marries young. OK, it references um, the vulnerabilities of uh, youthful commitments, which lead to heartbreak. Some of y'all have married young. That baby daddy, that baby mama, that husband, that wife. All of that is a form of marriage. Come on now. Some of y'all had some youthful commitments that led to heartbreak, okay? But God said, I'm calling you back from that, okay? He's going to restore you from that, okay? Um, and a lot, like I said, it's not just about women because men have been heartbroken and, and left, you know, deserted and distressed as well in the past, you know? God said, I'm reaching out to you in your most vulnerable state, like a wife who has been deserted and feels deeply distressed, Okay? For those who feel broken, lost, or unworthy, God is seeking to restore you and heal you. Glory to God. I heard the lady, uh, I heard the Lord say it was good. 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 Okay. And when I was writing this, it actually brought tears to my eyes. Like I'm talking about, I started boohoo crying, y'all. I'm trying to start crying because these people really just don't know. And when I was uh, writing this and I picked up on it was good in the spirit. The Lord said it was good, but after all that they did, after all that they put you through, after all that they, man, after the setups, after the lies, after the betrayals, after the trauma, after the pain, the heartbreak, the rejections, after the failures, after the, after the being let down, after the lack of support, after the lack of honesty, after the lack of trust between you and some people, it really changed some things. But God said, when I made it, it was good. It was good. Before all of that happened in your lifetime, it was good. Um, Genesis 131, God saw all that he made and it was very good. That was in the beginning, y'all. I want to declare and decree over you that your latter will be greater than the former. Your latter days will be more glorious than your former days. Your latter days will be very great. Glory to God. God said, I'm going to bring you into a new restored relationship filled with grace and renewed purpose. Some of y'all prepare for new relationships. Okay. Relationship is coming. Relationship is coming. Okay. My God, you need to rejoice, okay? Because the Lord said, your, um, your beginning will seem humble. Your beginning will seem humble. It may even seem small, okay? But you will be so prosperous. Your future is going to be so prosperous, okay? Uh, the Lord says, your beginning will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. He lined it up like this. So you're over here panicking about the smallness of a thing. You're over here panicking about where you're at right now. But God said your beginning will seem humble. It's going to seem humble. So prosperous will your future be. It's guaranteed. Glory to God. Though you started with little, you will end up with much. You're going to end up with much glory to God. Your beginning was small. Your latter will be great. That's a gem for somebody. It started off as a tiny thing. It's going to get big. Glory to God. Come on now. God said you will increase 
um, you will greatly increase. Okay. You will flourish. Okay. Things will be multiplied exceedingly. Glory to God. And I was picking up on Job in the spirit as well. Job, okay? You lost so much, but the Lord said, I'm going to bless your latter days more than your first, your beginning, okay? Job 8, 7. Come on now. And those of you who have endured hardship, suffering, and trials, those who feel beaten down by life's storms, those of you who feel beaten down by life's storms divine restoration is here divine restoration is here okay the um god is leaving you with a promise of being rebuilt okay being rebuilt and it's not just to repair what was broken but god said i'm going to restore you to a state that is far more glorious than before what i'm about to do for you is going to be far more glorious than before Glory to God. I heard the Lord say, I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. Come on now. Come on now. Isaiah 54, 11. Afflicted city, lashed by storms and not comforted. I will rebuild you with stones of turquoise. Your foundations with lapis lazuli. Oh, storm battered city. You unhappy one. Storm tossed. You and troubled, you afflicted one, okay? The one without comfort, the uncomforted, okay? The one enduring hardship, suffering trials, okay? You, you will receive beauty for ashes. Glory to God. I heard the Lord say, I am restoring the afflicted one to a place of honor, okay? You will go from affliction to a place of beauty and glory. Glory to God. Put it in the comments, say divine craftsmanship, okay? Um, and what I'm about to read to you, I'm going to re read the scripture again, but I want you to understand that I'm against all that powers and all of that extra and crystals. I don't believe in all that. I'm sorry. If you do, that's fine, but no rock. I'm sorry. The power comes from God. Listen, listen here. Afflicted city. Lashed by storms and not comforted, I will rebuild you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with lapis lazuli, okay? Divine craftsmanship, okay? The point I'm trying to make is God said he's going to rebuild you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with lapis lazuli. I think um, some translations, it said like sapphire, okay? Okay? God said, I'm going to rebuild you with those things. And those stones, they're nothing more than precious and beautiful. They're precious, beautiful materials. Come on now. They're, 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 those things are materials that are associated with wealth, royalty, divine favor. Come on now. When God is promising to rebuild you, right? Listen. Afflicted city, lashed by storms and not comforted, I will rebuild you by promising to rebuild the city with valuable stones, right? God is saying he is elevating you to a place of honor, fineness, impressiveness, beauty, elegance. Put that in the comments. Say, I'm finna get fine. If you finna get fine on them, put it in there. Say, I'm finna get fine. Okay. All right. Not only um, will physical aspects be restored and rebuilt. Okay. But the spiritual foundation of those who have suffered, they will be renewed. Okay. God said, I'm going to rebuild you with precious jewels. I'm going to rebuild you with precious jewels. Some translations say sapphires, okay? Um, but it's precious stones, okay? All right? But, you know, because the word of God listed it that way, he said, I'm going to rebuild you with these precious stones, okay? Understand that those precious stones obviously serve as a, a symbol, okay? Uh, um, they symbolize a connection to the divine, God said, I'm going to rebuild you with the be most beautiful things. He put it in the scripture. Okay. There is a connection to the divine. Okay. My point is that God is so meticulous. Okay. He listed out the stones that he was going to use to rebuild you. He is so meticulous. Divine craftsmanship. Okay. 
Because when he is crafting something of immense value, each stone will reflect his care, his precision, and his intention to make something that reflects with his glory. He chose the stones. He's going to make sure it reflects his glory. These precious stones, this rare thing, these these man come on y'all better hear me with y'all spiritual uh ears come on now god said i picked the stone i picked the stone i know how i'm going to rebuild you and i already picked the stone my god see when god restores right he does it with excellence he does it with excellence and attention to detail with excellence and attention to detail he's ensuring that it will be rebuilt far better than it was before right okay the one lashed by storms but then rebuilt with precious stones glory to god do you understand what i just said the one lashed by stones will be rebuilt with precious stone i mean i'm sorry the one lashed by storms will be rebuilt with precious stones Understand me that your pain has purpose. Beauty is coming out of that suffering. Glory to God. Beauty is coming out of that suffering. Glory to God. Okay. It's not just about patching up a broken city. It, God, is, God said, I'm meticulously crafting something carefully. Something of enormous value. It's big. It's big. Come on now. It's the reflection of divine care. Come on now. Precision and intention to make something that reflects my glory. Okay. He said it's a reflection of I'm going to make it reflect my glory. Glory to God. See, when God restores, he does so with excellence and attention to detail. Okay. You have been um, lashed by storms, afflicted essentially you've been afflicted you've been suffering okay but rejoice because god said that won't be your ending place that's not going to be your ending place okay the use of costly and rare stones implies that the value of the restored city or the person is immeasurable because god used these stones to rebuild you the value of you is immeasurable Glory to God. You are limitless, measureless, priceless. Put it in the comments. Say, I am priceless. Glory to God. I need you to really take time to sit back and understand God and acknowledge his omniscience. Understand this. Listen, what is omniscience? The state of knowing everything. Wisdom insight knowledge intelligent uh intelligence awareness okay understand this he already knew because what did god say what did god say to you what did god say to you darling where is it afflicted city lashed by storms and not comforted i will rebuild you with stones of turquoise he said afflicted city so he already called he called it like it was, like it was. I want you to understand that no spiritual attack is out of his control. No spiritual attack is out of his control. He knew what would afflict you. He knew what would have you crying. He knew what would hurt you. He knew what would embarrass you. He knew what would, he knew what would bring you to a point where you couldn't even be comforted. He knew. Come on now. But I want you to understand everything you've been through. He knew. Listen, everything you've been through, it didn't come to break you. It came to make you. Okay. It came to make you put it in the comments. Refinement, refinement. Okay. Understand this. It didn't come to break you, but to make you. It came to make you better. It came to upgrade. You. Isaiah 54, 17. But in that day coming, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice. I'm talking about not one, not a few, not a couple, not them, but not them, not those, but not those, not mm, maybe, maybe y'all will be silenced. He said, 
you will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. Every voice. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Glory to God. Okay. No weapon meant to hurt you will succeed. Okay. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. And if people accuse you of bad things, you will show that they are wrong. Put that in the comments. Say not guilty. Not guilty. Come on now. The Lord said, I'm going to defend you. I will defend you. The Lord will defend you and give you victory. You're about to be vindicated. You will be vindicated. Glory to God. You will be vindicated. Okay. Weapons will form, but their success is not guaranteed. God said, I stamped you. I didn't stamp that. The weapons will form. He's saying stuff is going to come up. The weapons is going to form, but that don't mean it's going to work. I don't care how long it's been, how much time went by. Understand this. The weapons will form, but they will not succeed. Let me tell you something. They killed Jesus. They murdered him. They murdered Jesus. He was dead for three days. And he rose again on the third day. They thought that nigga was good and dead. They thought you was good and dead. Forgive me, Lord, for speaking of you, calling you a nigga. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. But they thought that you was good and dead. But just like that, Lazarus had been in there for how long? Come out. When he's stinking or something. Listen. Listen. Huh? They thought you was good and dead. Okay. They thought you was good and dead. The weapons were formed, but their success is not guaranteed. Okay. They will not prosper or fulfill their intended purpose. Some people had some things intended. They did some things on purpose. But God is saying that what they intended to do is not going to work. And what I'm going to do to restore you, I'm going to bless you in such a way that it's going to be mind blowing to the very people who betrayed you, to the very people who was stopping your blessings, blocking your blessings. OK, the verbal assaults, the slander and the false accusations is going to be condemned. OK, your character and your uh, your uh, reputation it ain't going to be tarnished. It's not going to be tarnished. God said, I'm stamping you. It's not going to be tarnished. Okay. He said, you have been given authority to condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. You have been given this authority. Are you walking in your authority? Because he said every tongue. Come on now. I declare that you will have legal and spiritual victory over anyone or anything that seeks to harm or condemn you. Glory to God. Glory to God. God said, I gave you the authority to condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. Come on now. Come on now. My God. What does that mean? It means that you are not a coward. You ain't no coward. Come on now. You ain't no coward. God's people are not passive in the face of opposition. He said, I gave you the authority to condemn every tongue that rises against you. So you're going to play an active part in judgment. You have been given the authority to condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. He's giving you an active role in that. You are not a coward. God's people are not meant to be passive in the face of opposition. They are active participants, okay, in their own defense, okay, through God's authority. So what that mean? That mean you ain't no pussy. I said it. I said, if you if you got a nasty mouth in the comments, you put it in there. I ain't no pussy. I don't know what they thought it was. This ain't that. This ain't that. This ain't that. This is not that. I'm sorry for those of y'all on here who who be like, cause I got a diverse crowd, very diverse, and some of y'all are older, and y'all probably like, ah, this young girl. 
I'm telling you now, my grandma feel the same way. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you she say the same thing. My mama, she say my mouth nasty too. Everybody. It's nasty. But it's a blessed one. Yeah. It's a blessed one. Extremely blessed. Glory to God. A powerful one. Glory to God. But, um... Yeah, um, God says you're an active participant in, in your own defense. I gave you the authority. I gave you the authority. The authority. And if I gave you the, if the authority, that means I have empowered you. Put that in the comments. Say empowerment. I have empowered you. I have empowered you. I have given you legal and spiritual victory. Come on now. Some of y'all is not walking the walk. Y'all not walking the walk. Understand this. Come on now. No weapon will succeed. Every tongue you shall condemn. No weapon, physical, will succeed. And any tongue you shall condemn. Tongue, spiritual. Weapon, physical. Tongue, spiritual. God said no form will succeed i don't care how they try to put it how they try to slice it and dice it how they try to marinate it soak it up butter it and and tissery it up it ain't gonna work no form baby you can come out here with baked chicken fried chicken boiled chicken no form is gonna work you listen to him listen to him they better get geico these people they better get geico Cause we all stayed over here. We are in good hands. They better get Geico. They gonna need some insurance after these blessings. Some of y'all, these people might need to get their life insurance together. Cause it might, it might be the death of them. I hate to say that, but anyway, they better get Geico. Cause like I said, we in good hands over here all state okay god's um protection is comprehensive mm -hmm. it's covering every kind of threat total protection glory to god that's a gem of justice i just dropped on you that's law that's law glory to god you have a spiritual shield around you okay um god is protecting you from harm okay you're about to walk into a season of freedom, divine release, and restoration. My God, my God, my God. This is your year of jubilee. Put it in the comments. Say, this is my year of jubilee, okay? This is your year of jubilee. And from the moment that you sow your sacrificial seed of $50 into this divine soil, from the moment that you sow your seed into this divine soil, I truly believe that God is going to begin to move mightily in your life. Your seed is a declaration of your faith. As you give, you are aligning yourself with the promises of God. His word will not return void, but will accomplish everything that he has spoken over you. When you begin to trust God, it's going to open the door for you to be able to see his redemptive power. Move in faith, okay? Faith without works is dead, okay? Sow your seed and trust God. And that's going to activate your season of supernatural breakthrough if you know you need divine breakthrough you need turn around now you need justice now you need vindication now you need listen plant your seed and trust god and watch him move mightily in your life sow your 50 dollar jubilee seed in faith and watch your year start to take off we're in the fourth quarter you can't afford for 2025 if you know you need divine access and you're ready for your time of release, your time of blessing, step in faith. All my big steppers with big faith on here, they going to sow their seeds. Let me tell you something. A lady sold her seed the other day. She said her life was forever changed. She said she, was ne she will never be the same again. She will never be the same again. You cannot afford to miss this opportunity if you need divine access. God is faithful. And it will come to pass in your life, okay? Put it in the comments say, this is my season now, okay? And in the notes, put divine restoration when you sow your seed. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. Sow your seed 
and get your year of jubilee on. Get it on and popping. Because they don't, they don't believe me, just watch. They gotta watch you be blessed. I'm praying over every seed that comes through. For those of you who want uh, to send your prayer request, the address for that, the link is in the description box, okay? I got a couple of letters going out today, all right? I'm in high demand right now, y'all. So sometimes y'all just got to bear with me because it may take me a second to get everything. I'm only one person, you know, um, and with it being so many people, I I'm pulled so many different ways. But um, all glory goes to God and you guys be blessed 